We're going to look at transformations, right? By transformations, we mean if we scale things, if we stretch them out, or if we shift things around, if we translate, okay? Those are the two important kinds of transformations we're going to look at. Um, and reflections as well, that kind of comes as part of it. start with a super simple one, okay? Now, I've borrowed this as basically an import of this, but some things have happened horizontally and vertically. I haven't moved around at all and I haven't done any reflection. I'm just sort of making it bigger in some directions, okay? Now, which directions am I making it bigger in? I want to make it really clear that this, the best way, I think the most, um, the least error prone way and the quickest way to make sure you get this answer accurate is to borrow from what we've just done over here. So this is the reason why I point, drew your attention to it, right? If you've got this guy right in your back pocket, okay, it's your best way to make sure that this answer is going to be accurate. I have to do one more thing to this to make us be able to, to help us able to use that more helpfully, okay? Let's have a look at this number here, the 2, okay? The 2, which does it affect? Does it affect my horizontal scale or my vertical scale? Horizontal. Answer, horizontal. And that's quite obvious because it's modifying the x, right? What about this 3? Well, that's, that's the vertical scale, isn't it? But that's not entirely obvious, the way that it's been written right now. I think it's more helpful, even though it might seem less intuitive to begin with, to write it like this. Okay, I'm going to encourage you to do this. That 3 is modifying something vertical, so therefore it really should be attached to the Y. Now that I've got it written in this form, all the things that are mucking around with vertical are here, all the things mucking around with the horizontal are here, I'm going to launch into domain and range. Now have a look at this, right? This is exactly the same as this, except at the moment I've substituted Y on 3 for Y, and I've substituted 2X for X. Do you, do you see that? Okay. So all I need to do to work out domain and range, and then graph it, is to say, well, instead of x, I have 2x. Do you see that? Like, it's the same function. This 2x, I could have called it theta, and I just substitute it in, and I just say, I go home, right? And that's it. But right now, I've just called it a different angle. So now all I want to do is turn this into make x the subject, right? Well, I mean, x is in the middle, but you get the idea. What do I have to do to all three parts of this to make x that subject? Just division, right? That's not complicated. So that's why, I mean, we often think, oh, this is making it thinner. Well, this is giving you the algebra as to why, right? You're dividing everything by two. That's why it takes up less space. In exactly the same way, I think about this range restriction, and I say, well, instead of y, I have y on 3. So instead of minus pi on 2 less than or equal to y, I'm going to have y on 3 in the middle. And now, again, to make y the subject, you know what I multiply through. I multiply through. That's not complicated. <clears throat> Which, of course, we're kind of used to. I mean, you guys have done this for so long that when you look at this, I think most of you are like, oh, yeah, it stretches out three times. That is what it's doing. But the algebra comes from here. Like, there's actually a division on y. Okay? So let's draw a very brief image of this. It's going to look exactly like the one we just drew over there, right? Because there's been no translation or anything like that. It's still going to be centered on the origin. But all that's going to change is where our um, extremities are going to be. Okay, so I'm getting this kind of shape. So can we draw the same graph and relabel Yeah, so if you have a template, chances are you have um, two, possibly three different sizes for your sine curve. If you use, I mean, I pretty much always use the biggest one because it's easiest to label on there. Yeah, you might have an extra one <coughs> hiding in there. Whichever one you use, so long as they don't, I was mentioning this to Liz on Friday when we were talking about, oh, the only place where this is a problem is if you need more than one graph to live on the same set of axes. Oh. And then you're like, oh, then I really still do need to know this by hand. But otherwise, I would expect, if you're using a template, this graph and that graph to be physically the same size 
But the difference is, uh, what are the differences? Yeah, here and here are not going to be negative one and one. They're going to be negative a half and half. And likewise, this is going to be, instead of negative pi on two, negative three pi on two, all the way up to three pi on two. Okay, don't forget to label, by the way. Do we need a point for scale of this or only on the standard um, The answer is yes, you need a point for scale of this, and it's right. Well, in fact, I have two points of scale of mine there and there. Oh, right? right okay. Does that make sense? Whereas here, when I draw it, essentially it's like, well, I don't know where it ends. And I don't, yeah, so that's why I have to put that kind of Okay, good. Let's have a look at a simple translation now. Okay, we'll do this guy. Simple, simple translation. Okay. Now, I've just kept this sign for the sake of simplicity at the moment. What shall I do to this? There's one step before I can go ahead and use all this domain range stuff I've already done. What will I do? Yeah, I'm going to multiply through by 2 to make clear that the half is really affecting the vertical over there. All right. So now I've got this. Now, this is the strength of using this, just remembering this domain and range thing. Not only does it help you remember this better, but you, don't, you, you almost don't have to think in this case, right? Again, to work out domain, the domain is between negative 1 and 1 for whatever this is, right? Now instead of x or 2x, I have x take away 1. So that's what I'm going to stick in there, OK? What will I do to make x the subject? I'm just going to add instead of any multiplication division. Uh, adding 1 gives me this. Okay. Which, by the way, you know how we, we get confused about which way am I shifting, left or right? This doesn't leave any, like, you don't have to think, obviously I've gone that way. When you draw your 0 and 2, clearly you've gone to the right. Okay, so there's no confusion about, wait, which direction is this shifting me in? So that's that part. And to work out the range, we're from negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, bless you. And again, here... It's straightforward. All you need to do is divide through, and you can see how would you describe the effect. It's going to be sort of squashed down, right? It's shorter than it usually is, which is what you're normally thinking. Oh yeah, it's half the half the height. Okay, let's do a brief drawing again. And you can see, by the way, <clears throat> the importance of working out the domain and range because they tell me already where I need to draw my actual graph and I don't need to waste half of the set of axes because I can see I'm only going to have a positive part of the domain. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2. So I'm going to have this thing. And then I'm going to draw accordingly. So negative pi 4 to pi 4. Let's put them here and here. Don't forget your vertical bits, just like usual, and then connect the dots. 